Amen. Somebody give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, people, uh, people have asked me, people have wondered how come we're able to give out so many things that we give out. Um, and this reason is very simple. Because we are, we are a blessed people. Amen. Because we are blessed, that's why we are able to give these things out. Amen. And I'm telling you, this is, not, this is just the beginning. Yes. We are still going to give out more in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a church in Nigeria that at the end of the year, uh, they give out like how much? One million naira, not dollars. One million, right. And, and that's the equivalent of about seven thousand five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and every year they will give that to one member of the church. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. House of prayer. We'll get there, Amen. and we will even surpass that. Amen. Amen. They give it for people to start a business. Amen. 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 It's one thing to be praying for somebody, but it's another thing to give them tools to that's succeed. Right. Amen. And that's why for our children in the, in the after school program, we want them to have the 90 so that we can give them the college fund. But not only that, we want to give them the tools to succeed. Oh, somebody say amen to that. Yeah. Amen. And they shall succeed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. To God be the glory. Let's get on with the message. We have, uh, we have a lot of work to do today. Amen. Are you ready? Amen. Yeah. amen. To God be the glory. Amen. So let's have the anchor scripture and let's stand as we read the New King James Version together. The anchor scripture is in 3rd John chapter 1 verse 2. Hallelujah. 3rd John. Actually, 3rd John is just one chapter. So it's just 3rd John verse 2. And when you're there, say amen. 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 So let's read that verse together. Are you ready to read? Let's read. Beloved, I pray. Let me read the amplified version to you. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. The message version says from verses 1 through 4, The pastor to my good friend Gaius, how truly I love you. We've been the best of friends and I pray for good fortune in everything you do and for your good health, that your everyday affairs prosper as well as your soul. I was most happy when some friends arrived and brought the good news that you persist in following the way of truth. Nothing can make me happier than getting reports that my children continue diligently in the way of the truth. Let us pray. Spirit of God, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for what you're about to do in the lives of your children. We come with an expectation, O oh Lord God, that the supernatural will happen in this place. We come with an expectation, O oh Lord God, that signs and wonders shall follow your word in the name of Jesus. We come with an expectation that you meet each and every one of us at the point of our need in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. I surrender myself unto you, Holy Spirit. Use me all to your honor, all to your glory. Speak to me and speak through me. In in Jesus' name, use my vocal cords. Let them hear the voice of God and not the voice of men. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. As you sit down, tell yourself, I'm still in the right place. At the right time. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We've been speaking about uh, healing. And this is our third a sermon on healing and uh, there is so much uh, to talk about when you are talking about healing but I'm going to try to uh, not protract it too long uh, because this is where I'm going with it uh, the, the purpose of these teachings is to get us ready for our healing center can I get an amen, amen. Uh, it is to more or less to just galvanize our faith to really just encourage our faith towards uh, uh, the healing center so that we'll get to the point that we are laying hands upon the sick and we have an expectation that they will recover. Amen. 
Amen. But before we start giving medication to other people, we need to just first of all give the medication to ourselves uh, so that we can tell other people that I am sure that I'm sure that I'm sure that this medication works. How do you know that the medication works? Because I tried it, I used it, and it worked for me, and it will work for you in Jesus' name. Amen. So today I really, I really came in here with an expectation that I will see healing, instantaneous healing in this place in the name of Jesus. I came with an expectation that God will bless somebody in their body today in the name of Jesus. Not tomorrow. I know that God is able to do it tomorrow. I know he can do it two days from now, but I've come with an expectation that this service is a healing service in the name of Jesus. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good health is very crucial uh, to all of us. Amen. And we all know the importance of good health. Amen. And everyone desires good health Amen. because it's a springboard for progress and achievement. Uh, you may have uh, the best uh, of skills, you may have the best of talents, uh, you may have the best of wisdom, uh, but if you don't have the health to support it, uh, all that may go to waste. And, and you will see that in a lot of uh, a lot of basketball players, football players, uh, and they, they, they come out of college and they have all these talents, they're so good. But uh, one, uh, one day uh, an injury happens, another injury happens, another injury, and because of bad health, they are unable to achieve that which God has destined them for. And so also with us, if we, if we have instances of bad health, no matter what we want to do, it will be very crippling for us. Every born again believer has the promise of God for divine health. Amen. We read in our anchor scripture, Beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So the plan of God for every child of God is to live a life without sickness or disease. Can I get an amen, amen. to that? The plan of God is for every child of God to live a life without sickness or disease. Can I get an amen, amen. to that? Oh, let me say it again. Maybe you didn't hear me. The ultimate plan of God is for every child of God to live without sickness or disease. Can I get a loud amen? Amen. The plan of God is for men to have dominion over sickness and disease. Yes, but there was the fall of Adam. And sickness and disease entered the world. Hallelujah. Yes, but God made a way for men to have medication. To have medication. To have medication. The presence of God is the medication for men. In the garden, they had the presence of God. So the medication of God was in abundance. But once that, well, that relationship was, uh, was affected and man was now outside of the garden of Eden, God now began to say, these people need medication. I've got to get the medication to them. They need medication. I gotta get medication to them. I cannot appear to them like I used to appear because if I do, they will die. So but how am I gonna bring the medication of God to these people? And once in a while, the presence of God will show up. It will show up like in the life of Abraham, the presence of God will show up. Like in the life of Noah, the presence of God will show up. The presence of God will show up once in a while in the life of men. But one thing you have to see is that God will always use a human agent to bring about his medication. 
So he got to a point, he said, I'm going to appoint Moses as the deliverer of my medication. They need medication, and I'm going to use you, Moses. They need medication, and I'm going to use you. And then he goes into this elaborate plan with Moses of building uh, the Ark of the Covenant. And in the Ark of the Covenant, he said, my presence will always be in that Ark of the Covenant. And it was a place that the, the Jews will always, they had so much reverence for the Ark of the Covenant. And then they had the Ark in the first temple, they had the Ark of of the covenant in the holy of holies I have I have in my hands a replica of the ark of the covenant of course the one they had was it was bigger than this <laughs> God, the glory it was so big that uh, men will have to carry it upon their shoulders mm -hmm. amen. amen hallelujah amen. amen hallelujah thank you Lord hallelujah God gave them very specific instructions how to carry the ark. The ark had the presence of God. And in that presence, in the presence of God, is the medication of God. And in the presence of God till today is the medication of God. Amen. You see, there, there is, uh, there is uh, uh, the natural medication or the medication through science that we have discovered of course this is all uh, things that were done by God but yes we have uh, discovered uh, this medication but there is divine healing medication that comes uh, through the power of God and the medication that I'm talking about today is medication that comes through the power of God amen so God says, I got to deliver medication to them. Uh, let me, let me, let me stay on the course. Let me sit, stay on the course. Uh, um, Third John says, beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Uh, my, my, my title for today's teaching is how to receive divine healing. How do you receive divine healing? How do you receive divine healing? Uh, I, I, and, and, and I want you to listen again as I read 3 John chapter 2. I'm told, 3 John chapter 1 verse 2. He said, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. As your soul prospers. As your soul prospers. So I want to speak to you about the prosperity of your soul. When you are born again, the perfect spirit of God comes into you. Amen. But then, I have the perfect spirit of God in me. But I'm still struggling. Amen. I, I, I don't know about you, but when I got born again, I still had some challenges. Amen. Amen. You all look so wonderful, so spiritual. The day you got born again, you are just like Saul. One day you fell down on the road to Damascus and the next day you, you got up and you were preaching the gospel to God with the glory. I thank God for your life. But there are some of us that even though we were born again, but we still had struggles. And, 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 and then when you listen to a teaching that tells you that the perfect spirit of God is in you, then you wonder how come that I'm still struggling even though I am born again. I know that I'm born again. You know how I knew that I'm born again? Every time they made an altar call when I just got saved, every time I was the first one to run there, they make the altar call and run again. They had to call me and tap me and say, wait, come, 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 come. No, it's not done like that. You've done it. It's done. You are born again. So I said, I'm truly born again. I don't have to come again. They said, no, you don't have to come again. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. But here I am. I am born again, but I am still struggling. I am still struggling. But then let me tell you, let me make it very simple to you. The key is in the prosperity of your soul. 
The key is in the prosperity of your soul. And that's the simple secret to your healing, to your deliverance, to your peace, to your joy, to everything that you need. The average believer who is born again is filled with the Holy Spirit but still struggling with different things. I tell you, all you need is to get to a place of the prosperity of your soul. It looks, it looks, it sounds very simple. <clears throat> Amen. But let's, let's, let's unpack it a little bit. Let's unpack it a little bit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So God was saying, how am I going to get medication to uh, men? Uh, they need medication. I need to find a way to deliver medication to the children of men. How shall I deliver medication to the children of men? I cannot show up amongst them like I used to. Uh, they will die. Uh, so, so God made this uh, elaborate uh, method to deliver medication to the children of men. You remember when we were talking about uh, uh, the, the, the children of Israel? When they had this situation and, and, Moses, and, and Moses had to make uh, a serpent and, and wrap it around a, a pole and lift it up and everyone that looked upon it, they were healed. So men, God will use those kind of uh, agents to bring about healing to men. You see, one of the things, uh, and some of you will be familiar with this, and I think I've used this uh, slides before. Um, one of you'll be you'll be familiar with this. Uh, um, when you go to the hospital, one of the first things, whether they're going to give you medication, they're not going to give you medication. It has become so standard these days. Uh, one of the first things they will do is they will set up uh, an IV. They will set up an IV, something like that. And what's the purpose of the IV? So that they can get medication to you as quickly as possible. If they need to give you something that they needed to heat right away, they set up the IV line and from there they are able to push the medication. So God is asking, how am I going to have an IV in the lives of these ones that will push medication into them? Amen. Amen. Uh, there are many methods that they will use medication. There are tablets and capsules uh, and liquid medication, spray medication. Uh, all of this still to achieve the purpose uh, of the delivery of medication uh, to the, to the, to the uh, patient. And sometimes they will use an injection, uh, some, something like that. Amen. Hey, Amen. There are some nurses in the house and they say, well, I, we're, we're familiar with this. Well, some of us on the other side, we don't like you when you bring the needle. Yes. Amen. We know you're doing your job. And, uh, yes. Amen. To God be the glory. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 And, and the reason why they will use an injection is that most of the medication, even though they're putting it in injection form, most of them don't have tablets, but because they need it to heat real quick, so they will put it in an injection and they will put the injection in. So how do I receive divine healing? Somebody say prosperity of your soul. Prosperity of your soul. So in the Old Testament, God gave them the temple. And in the temple was the Holy of Holies, and the medication was located in the Holy of Holies. And the cupboard of God, talking about the glory of God, the Shekinah glory of God was located in this Holy of Holies. So that means the medication of God was located in their temple in the Holy of Holies. So but there's a problem. Not everybody can go into that Holy of Holies. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, only one person is permitted to go, and that person can only go one time a year. So if you are sick, between one time and another time, uh, there is no medication. There is no medication. So God said, that there has to be a way that I will give them continuous medication. That they don't have to come year after year because in, 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 the, in the time of atonement, on the day of atonement, the high priest will go and then they will have this uh, uh, sin goat and they will put all the sins of men upon the goat and send the goat away, which is an indication that all of their sins have been taken away. So God is saying, how can I get medication? Uh, how can I put medication in them? How can I get my medication into them? Then there must have been an idea. 
Why don't I have something implanted in man that man is able to control the delivery of the medication? Amen. Why is it that I don't have something that can be implanted in man so that man can have control of the delivery of his medication? And, 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 and the nurses and the doctors in the house, amen. amen. Uh, you don't see doctors, I see doctors in the house. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And they, they're shaking their head. They're shaking their head. Because there is, there, is this, there is this kind of medication delivery in which they will actually put a pump on the inside of you and you will be the one to actually be giving yourself the medication. Amen. So it's usually given after surgery. After surgery and when pain is very intense, uh, you have to be careful not to give it to everybody because some will get addicted to it. Uh, but it, it gives you an opportunity to be able to control the pain. You don't have to call the nurse. You don't have to call the doctor. They just tell you when you feel the pain is at this level, you just squeeze it. And when you, once you do that, it, it, it puts a measure of medication into you. Oh, can I get an amen from somebody? Am I talking good medicine here? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the same way, if you can understand that natural concept, mm -hmm. in the same way God said, God had already done it before man discovered it. In the same way God said, I am going to put a pump. I just am using a quote and unquote. I'm going to put a pump on the inside of you. And you are going to be the control of the delivery of the medication. I'm going to put my spirit on the inside of you. And, yours, and you will be the one to now authorize how much medication comes. Up. Oh, can I get an amen from yeah, somebody? Amen. So it is really in your hands the prosperity of your soul. Amen. It is really in your hands the prosperity of your soul. How do I receive divine healing? By the prosperity of your soul. By the prosperity of your soul. He said, I'll put my spirit upon them so they can get to the point that man can come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace in time to help in time of need and that's Hebrews 4 16 so that's like a patient controlled analgesia meaning that you control the amount of pain medication that comes into you Hallelujah. but let me let me let me let me explain this let me explain this so that let me explain this more uh, let me explain this first Thessalonians 5 23 May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you whole, make you holy and whole, put you together, listen to the spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our master, Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he would do it. So this text is telling us that there are three parts of man. We have the, we have the spirit, we have the soul, and we have the body. We have the spirit, we have the soul, we have the body. When you are born again, your spirit receives the spirit of God and you have a perfect spirit in you. How many believe that they have the spirit of God in them? If you have the spirit of God in you, it cannot be an imperfect spirit. Because there's no way that the spirit of God will be imperfect. So even though you have struggles, even though you go through situations, it means that locked up inside you is the perfect spirit of God. Amen. So the reason why you are still going through the struggles, the reason why you're still going through the situations, is that perfect spirit is locked up on the inside of you, but that medication that is in the perfect spirit is not being released into your system. Hallelujah. And it's a patient controlled. Patient controlled. You control it. You control it. You control it. So you have the spirit that is perfect. And then you have the body which I can see. And you all have fine, fine bodies, well dressed up, well taken care of, amen, well groomed, amen. I can see the bodies, I can see it. You can see me, I can see you. What I'm seeing is not the real you, what I'm seeing is the housing that houses you. Amen? amen. So what I'm seeing is just the shell. And how do we know it's a shell? 
On that day, either, uh, either it's a rapture or either uh, you rapture before Jesus comes. Uh, amen. 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 Pastor Precious is preaching here too. Amen. 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 I'll tell you what she's preaching. She said, 20 years. Amen. 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 Right. To God be the glory. Right. Right. On that day, some, some, somebody said, I received the 120 I years. Amen. 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 On that day, that shell is going to be left behind. That shell is going to be left behind. And then the real you is gone. Yeah. So there is the spirit of God that is infused into your own spirit. And then there is your body. But in the midst of these two is your soul. Your soul is your thinking. Your intellect. Uh, you know that thing that gets us into trouble? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you don't use it properly. Mm -hmm. Because everything starts from what you are thinking. Yeah. Everything starts from what you are thinking. Amen. So when it's talking about the prosperity of your soul, it's talking about the prosperity of your thinking. It's talking about the prosperity of your thinking, of your mind, the prosperity of your mind. And so what that uh, scripture is saying is that if you can prosper in your mind, you will prosper in life. You will prosper in your health. You will prosper in your finances. You will prosper. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. That's why you will see the sons of kings and queens. Somehow, somewhere, it just appears like they just know how to do this kingly business. And they just follow after their parents because that's the mindset from when they are little. Amen. And let's look at the opposite. People that have their parents and everybody around them, they have always lived in poverty. If you don't struggle to get out, everybody stays in the same rot. Oh, we are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So when you are born again, your mind is not born again. Your mind remains the same mind that it was yesterday. If you are born again today and you step outside of this room, your mind is going to remain the same thing. You are thinking of the same problems. You are thinking of the same situations in the name of Jesus. But that is why the Bible tells you it's now a process of renewing your mind. It's a process, renewing your mind. For some of us, it may not be a process. For some of us, it may be instantaneous. And we bless God for that. But for most of us, and I can speak for most of us in this place, it's a process. It's a process. It's a process. And we do it day by day, day by day, little by little. Yes, a journey that's going to take a thousand miles, it starts with one step. So we take the first step of being born again. And just like a little baby, you know, when they start to walk, and you put them, you stand them up, and they take the first step, and they fall down. Do they stop trying? No, you didn't stop trying. Don't tell me you didn't fall down when you started walking. We all fell down to God with the glory. Don't tell me you didn't fall down when you started riding your bike we all fell down but we got up we picked up the bike we dusted it off and we tried again and we tried again until we got it perfect and we can ride and sometimes ride without even holding the bars we are going somewhere we are going somewhere in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are what you think. You are what you think. Hallelujah. You are what you think. Proverbs 27 3 says, As a man thinks, so is he. As a man thinks, so is he. That is why when the devil wants to attack you, he attacks you in your mind. It starts from your mind. 
begins to play with your mind. Begins to tell you things. When you see something, you see that, oh, pastor is wearing a gray jacket or whatever color it is. Something, something like that. Something like that. Women know how to say that it's a different shade of gray. This is not really gray. It's charcoal. Gray is gray. Make life easy. Blue is blue. Make life easy. To God be the glory. But then the devil starts to tell you, oh, you think it's black. It's not really black. It's not even gray. You know, if you look at it very closely, it's white though. Oh. And then you yeah, hold it. Good. Amen. Really? That's really that's really the reaction. Really? But we fall for that. We fall for that. You have a little headache. And you start thinking, oh, I read in the books. It's called aneurysm. Uh, when 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 something when there's a bust in your brain, uh, you have a little headache. It's a tiny tiny little bit head yes, headache. Yeah. And all of a sudden you are thinking the whole yes. gamut of everything that's possible in the book. Hey, Amen. Yes. To God be the glory. We fall for it. We fall for it. When we have the word of God that tells us uh, this is the way that you should go. Mm -hmm. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As a man thinks, so is he. When you begin to think things that are destructive, that are negative, it gets us into a very bad position. That's why the Bible actually tells us the things that we should think on. Give us a list of things. He said, think on these things. You know something? What you are thinking, your thoughts, will determine your actions. I can tell you what you are thinking by the things that you do. Amen? And your actions will determine your character. What you are thinking will determine your words. And what you're speaking will determine your action. Your action will determine your character. Hallelujah. And your, character, your action will determine your habits. Your habits will form your character. And your character will determine your destiny. So look at it. Where did it start from? What you are thinking. What you are thinking. So your thoughts will determine your destiny. Your thoughts will determine your destiny. Why do you think we're giving these children a college fund? And we're singing it every day. College fund, college fund, college fund. We're putting something in their mind that is going to determine their destiny. We know that the $25 that we put into the account for them is not going to pay for, it's not going to pay their tuition for, uh, uh, um, uh, for college. But it, it, it will go some ways, right? Yes. Amen. It will go some ways. But what we are doing is we are implanting something in their mind. We are affecting their thinking. So now from a tender age, they are already thinking college. So when people are talking on the street and talking about different things, how they are going to go to, how they're going to go to prison, and how that's how you, uh, that's how you get some points on the streets and things, they are already thinking in terms of college. As you think, as you think, so are you. So when you begin to think about sickness or disease. Especially, especially in situations where we have parents that have had such conditions and, 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 and we've, we've seen them go through the conditions and then we're starting to look at ourselves and say, maybe I'm going to have the same thing. When the Bible clearly tells you that you already have the DNA of Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So think the word. Think the word. What does the word say about your success? What does the word say about your health? What does the word say about Think your prosperity word. or your marriage, your relationships? Yes. Speak Amen. the word. Think the word. Because what you think becomes your words. Your words become your action. Your action becomes your habit. Your habit becomes your character. 
and your character determines your destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, a lot of people confess the word. And I, and I, and I believe in confessing the word. Uh, we are going to have um, our healing service on Wednesday, right? Wednesday is our healing service. We invite you to come. We do a lot of confessing the word together. So I believe in confessing the word. I believe in confessing the word. But a lot of people confess the word, but their thinking is not aligned to the words that they are speaking. So it becomes empty. A lot of Christians confess the word and they can quote the word to you, but in their mind, in their thinking, it's a total different ballgame. So what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Let's look at this example. Let's look at this example. Matthew 9, 20. Uh, Matthew 9, 20 and 21. But let me see if I can find it real quick. Matthew 9. Somewhere in my Bible. Amen. Okay. Matthew 9, 20. Here was Jesus going about his business. And he's going about his business and somebody came and said, uh, my daughter just died. Come and raise him up. Amen. That, that seems like somebody just called Glory House of Prayer and said, somebody just died. Come and raise him up. Amen. 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 Because we're going to see the dead raised. Amen. 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 We're going to see the dead raised in the name of Jesus. We are. If we saw it in Jesus, we are going to see it in this place in the name of Jesus. And so when, when, I, when I get the call that uh, they need to raise the dead somewhere, then I will, I will look for your number to God with the glory. Hallelujah. All those of you that have signed up, uh, look for your number. Say, you go and raise that dead. Amen. Somebody, hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Jesus was going about, he was going to raise, I was going to raise this daughter that had died. But uh, in the meantime, there is this large group of people that surrounded him. A large group of people that surrounded him. Uh, we're talking about how to receive divine healing, right? So, uh, so this woman, the Bible describes her as somebody who had an uh, um, issue of blood. And, and she's dealt with it for about 12 years. She's paid every doctor, obviously. She's looked for every specialist. She knows everybody by name. She has them on speed dial, all the specialists in the area. She, she, she's contacted everybody. Everybody have tried. And now she, she has no money. And now they're not even treating her because she doesn't have any money. And then she hears the word that Jesus is in town. The very glory of God is in town. The Shekinah glory of God is in town. She had the, the, she had the message that the word was in town. And the word is a glory house of prayer. Can I get an amen from somebody? The word is in this place. The glory of God is in this place. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So here, here is this woman. Uh, uh, um, and, and in the context of the culture, a woman is not supposed to be in that gathering where men, where it's predominantly men, uh, except if it's your uh, husband or your wife. Uh, but here she is, and she also had an issue of blood. She's not even supposed to be around anybody. She's supposed to be, when she's coming, she's supposed to be saying unclean, unclean, so that everybody will get away from her, so that they, they wouldn't become contaminated because of her uncleanliness. So for here she, her, here she is. Uh, the Bible said she, 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 she began to think in her mind. And she began to say in her mind. So it started by what she was thinking. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I could, I could die doing it. But I'm going to do this. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. and, and the man had a, uh, the woman had a flow of blood for 12 years uh, and came from behind, uh, uh, behind uh, to touch the helm of his garment. Uh, and, and for she said to herself, 
she said to herself that she's talking to herself she's talking to her mind she's saying it in your mind what are you saying in your mind about yourself when you look in the mirror what do you see about yourself when you look in the mirror what do you see about yourself even when people compliment you uh, do you truly receive that or you even say oh you're just saying that you're just saying that it can't be true because i have such a low self-esteem of myself uh, and that will not be your portion in the name of jesus uh, you are sons and daughters uh, of almighty god uh, somebody give god praise uh, you are sons and daughters uh, of almighty god in the name of Jesus. Here was this woman pressing in, pressing in. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. She thought about it. She said it. It became her action. That became her habit. And it formed a character right there. And it shaped her destiny. In the name of Jesus. She pushed through the crowd. There were a lot of people there. She said, but I'm going forward. There were a lot of hindrances. She said, I'm going forward. And there, were people, there were reasons why she shouldn't go forward. She said, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to push and push and push until she got to the point of touching the helm of his garments. And once she did, the Bible said, suddenly, immediately, she became well. Because she thought in her mind, she thought in her mind, she kept saying, uh, go to the Amplified. The Amplified said, and behold, a woman who had suffered from a flow of blood for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she kept saying to herself, it was a continuous saying, she kept saying to herself, the message version says she was thinking to herself, if I can just put a finger on this robe, I will get well. Jesus turned, caught her at it, and then he reassured her, Correct, daughter, you took a risk of faith. Now you are well. The woman was well from then on. Amen. And we also see in Mark 5, 29, uh, in the Amplified, uh, and immediately, that's the result now, immediately her flow of blood uh, was dried up at the source, uh, and suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed of her distressing ailment. What are you thinking? My purpose of preaching this is not to give you information Amen. about healing. My purpose of preaching it is so that you can obtain healing. Amen. My purpose of preaching this is so that you can obtain healing. And I believe God that people will be healed in this place yes. today in the name of Jesus. Not tomorrow. Today I believe God that people will be healed in this place today in the name of Jesus. I believe for your healing. I believe for your healing. I don't know about you, but I've been praying for your healing. I've been praying for your healing. I've been believing God for your healing. And it is manifesting. It is manifesting today in the name of Jesus. The Bible said, I pray that you may prosper in all yeah. things and be in health just as your soul prospers in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Lord. You. Thank you, Jesus. There is healing in the house. 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 In the name of Jesus. The meditation of God has been placed on the inside of you. It's a patient controlled medication. The medication of God is on the inside of you. Yes, our mind begins to think that every doctor has told me that I have to live with this for the rest of my life. I've come to tell you that I serve a God. I serve a God. I serve a God that nothing is impossible for him. In the name of Jesus. He said, if only you can believe. If only you can believe. If only you can believe. Is there a believer in the house? Is there a believer in the house? Somebody ought to help me and preach this message. Somebody ought to help me and give him praise. Somebody ought to help me and exalt his name. And exalt his name in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to.
to place your hand upon any part of your body, any part of your body that you are believing God for healing, any part of your body that you are believing God for healing, any part of your body that you are believing God for healing. God said, God said, God said, somebody with back pain in the middle of your back, a sharp pain, intermittent sharp pain. God said, He's healing that pain. He's healing that pain. He's healing that pain. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Who shunned the Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Give God praise. You will not return the same way you came into this meeting. You will not return the same way you came. You will not return the same way you came. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That pain, that pain in that side, in that side of your leg, it's on the left side of your leg, it's on the left side of your leg. It comes from your groin and it goes into your leg. It goes from your groin and it goes into your leg. God said he's healing that pain, he's healing that pain, he's healing that pain in the name. Jesus, hallelujah, somebody give God praise, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, somebody place their hands upon their head, that headache, that migraine headache, any kind of headache, any kind of headache, I speak against it in the name of Jesus, any kind of headache, I speak against it in the of that testimony that you heard today. The second part of that testimony that you heard today. And if, if I just get the permission of Sister Sandra to share that. Because after she had given us that testimony and we recorded that video, she then went again to the doctors because the doctors had told her there was something in the stomach, that she was having this problems with the stomach, that they were going to have to operate upon her stomach. But when the sense of God gathered, somebody give God praise, when the sense of God gathered and they laid hands upon her in the name of Jesus, she went to the doctor and to the amazement of the doctor, the doctor said, you don't need any surgery, it is well with you in the name of Jesus. Somebody give God praise. I went into the archives of Glory House of Prayer because there was a testimony that was given to us a long, long time ago. And I said, I have to go and find this testimony. I have to go and find this testimony. It was, it was on a Wednesday evening that we prayed. The baby was all the way in California. Uh, some of you know how far California is. And the grandparents, it was the grandparents that came to church. And they said, they're going to have surgery on my, on my grandbaby tomorrow. Uh, come and pray with us. And we all gathered, all of us gathered. And we laid hands upon the grandparents as a point of contact for this child. The child must have been about... Uh, for two years old so we prayed over the baby and and it was uh they were going in to repair a hole in the heart Amen. and uh so our prayer was that when the doctors get there they would discover that there will be no need for them to have the surgery amen, amen. amen. so when they are going to do that kind of surgery what they do is they're going through the groin they send a camera in to look inside and so they did all of that so they prepped the baby they have the picture of the prep they sent me a picture of that prep so they prepped the baby the baby was all ready and then they they sent in the camera and then they looked and inside the hole was almost healed all by itself so the doctor came out with his camera and said there is no need for us to have surgery there's no need for us to have surgery because God has already started his work and how many know that God that starts the work it will perfect it in the name of Jesus. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we as we're preaching, as the song is going on, as everything is going on. If any time during the whole of this service, yes. you see that God has healed you of anything, please let us know. Yes. Because it is a spirit of prophecy. Yes. It's a spirit of prophecy. 
It's a spirit of prophecy that will happen in the lives of other people. In the name of Jesus. Some of you are going to be healed right now. Some of you are going to be healed as you're going in. In the name of Jesus. But I guarantee you, there is healing in the word. There is healing in the word. And how do you receive your divine healing? By the prosperity of your soul. By the prosperity of your soul. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.